The Sheikh, he said, in order to complete this uh, statement, in order to just bring it to a close, he said, I'm going to quote to you from the great Sheikh and the amazing scholar, Sheikh Al-Allama Muhammad Musalih Al-Uthaymeen. Rahimahullah, and he said, the Sheikh said, I seek refuge from the evil of myself and the evil of my actions. He said, I believe personally that Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen was the greatest scholar of fiqh of his time. And that there was nobody who reached such a level of encyclopedic knowledge and vast amount of reading like Sheikh Muthaymin. He said, we're not talking about how much he was right or wrong. We're just talking about his sheer ability to give out or to, to, to in the science of fiqh, his sheer ability in the science of fiqh. So Sheikh Muthaymin was asked about Sheikh Al-Albani. He said, well, we're not here to talk about Sheikh Al-Albani, rahimahullah. But this is just an example because there's so much, so many people talk about Sheikh Al Albani from those who love him, those who don't like him, those who are fair to him, those who oppress him. So he quoted from uh, a Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen that a Sheikh Al Albani was a muhaddith and he was a faqih, he was a scholar of hadith, he was a scholar of fiqh. But he was a scholar of hadith more than he was a scholar of fiqh. That's what Sheikh Nathameen said. He was a scholar of hadith more than he was a scholar of fiqh. And the Sheikh said, I don't have any, we don't have any objection to that. Any, like that. He was both, but he was more of a scholar. He was more known for his hadith than he was known for his fiqh. Or he had more to say about hadith than he had to say about fiqh. And the Sheikh, he said, I say the opposite about Sheikh Nathameen. That Sheikh Nathameen was a scholar of fiqh and a scholar of hadith. But he was more a scholar of fiqh than a scholar of hadith. He had more statements about fiqh than he had statements about hadith. He said, does anyone going to oppose me in this? Is anyone going to say to me that Sheikh Ibn didn't have knowledge of hadith? He said he was a scholar of hadith, he was a scholar of fiqh. But he was more known for his fiqh than he was known for his hadith. And he said, Sheikh Ibn himself said, that my knowledge of hadith is not the same as my knowledge of fiqh. They're not equal, not perfectly equal. So then the Sheikh, he said that this is to explain the flaw in this whole concept when these people say that every muhaddis faqih, every faqih is muhaddis, muhaddis is not faqih, faqih is and all of these different variations, that this isn't really based upon proper a proper investigation or a proper understanding he said the the basic principle and the rule is that a faqih should also be a muhaddith and a muhaddith should also be a faqih however we're not going to say that there isn't there aren't some flaws in people there aren't one or two or you know some exceptions in that regard and someone who has a flaw in their knowledge of hadith compared to their fiqh or a flaw in their knowledge of fiqh compared to hadith but he says this doesn't negate the principle that the scholar is the one who has both of those two things the sheikh says there are three questions that remain in order for us to complete what we want to present to you in this sitting and in this lesson he said the first is that ahlul hadith are criticized for having a deficiency in usul al-fiqh. Usul al-fiqh being the science which deals with the fundamental principles and way of taking the rulings out of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And the Shaykh, he said, this is not correct. From the point of view of the, of the concept, the concept is not correct. He said, yes, Ahlul Hadith are human beings and there may be people among Ahlul Hadith that have a deficiency in their understanding of Usul al Fiqh. But as a concept, that Ahlul Hadith as a group, as a group of people, are deficient in Usul al Fiqh, this is something that is not uh, correct. He said their manhaj, their methodology, is the closest one to the truth. He said we don't deny that. But they're individual people, some of them might have a deficiency in this, but as a whole, as a principle or a concept, can we say that Ahlul Hadith are deficient in the matter of Usul al-Fiqh? The Shaykh said, I'm going to respond. The first book to be written on Usul al-Fiqh 
is the book Ar Risalah by Al Imam Al Shafi'i, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and he said Al Imam Al Shafi'i was the scholar of Ahlul Hadith in his time. He was the one that everyone went back to for hadith in his time, such that they gave him the nickname Nasir al Hadith, the supporter of hadith. He was known, he was the big reference point for hadith in his time, and he was the first person to write a book about usul al fiqh, usul al fiqh upon which fiqh rulings are based. These are the principles and rules and science upon which fiqh rulings are based. And the Sheikh, he mentioned also another book called Qawati al Adilla by Sam'ani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And the Sheikh also mentioned uh, Fawaid Usul, which were both, he said this is uh, something which uh, Sheikh Rasulullah Muntimiyah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, spread and spoke about. He said this is full of, these are, this is to do with Usul al Fiqh, which are full of honoring the hadith and venerating the hadith and raising up the hadith. And they don't have any of that uh, blind sort of following or, or blind allegiance to a madhab in a way that is blameworthy. He says none of that in there. And then he said, I'm going to repeat again that Ahlul Hadith are human beings. They may have some mistakes. There may be individuals who didn't know as much about this as others. He said, I'm not going to say they're human beings. They might have mistakes. But what I'm going to say to you is that when you look at these, the Sheikh said, when you look at all these books, what you see is the veneration of hadith within, usul, within those people who wrote about usul al-fiqh. And he mentioned how Imam Shafi'i being the first one to write on that topic. Then he said, if you look at the chapter headings in Sahih al-Bukhari, you see the fiqh, the knowledge and the istimbat, being able to take the rulings out from Imam al-Bukhari's Sahih. And Imam al-Bukhari is who in terms of hadith? He's their, their teacher, he's their sheikh and when it comes to hadith. He's the one everyone mentions when goes back to when it comes to hadith. And yet his chapter titles contain so much fiqh and so much extraction of rulings and, and in terms of usul fiqh, istimbat, how you take the rulings out from the hadith. He said that there are academic studies. There are studies that have been published out of universities, studies that have come just ilmi, like scholars writing about them themselves, in tens and tens and tens of books, just talking about usul al-fiqh and taking out rulings just from the chapter titles in Sahih al-Bukhari. And the Sheikh he mentioned also, and Imam Ibn Khuzayma, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said many people don't know he was the Sheikh of Imam al-Bukhari. But al-Bukhari doesn't narrate from him in his Sahih. So Al-Bukhari doesn't narrate a hadith from him in Sahih Al-Bukhari, but he was his teacher and Bukhari sat with him and learned from him and took hadith from him. If you read the book Sahih Ibn Khuzayma, you see the fiqh that he had and the istimbat, his ability to take out rulings. Because remember, usul fiqh is all about taking out the rulings, how you take the rulings out. So how he could take out these rulings and how much fiqh he had, and yet he is again another scholar of...